Hi, my name is Stefano Fazzini. I'm a vascular surgeon and researcher at Tor Vergata University of Rome. I'm more than glad to speak with you about IVL to safely treat the calcified iliac arteries for aortic endovascular procedures. Let's talk of current challenges and treatment strategies for calcified access in EVAR and TVAR procedures. Calcium presents a challenge to us in endovascular intervention. Severe calcification can increase the risk of dissection and perforation with conventional PTA technology. There is a risk of distal embolization, of course. Vessel recoil is common with PTA as you impose pressure on healthy vessel and the pressure of the balloon may have no impact of the superficial and deep calcium. And importantly for our topic today, it can inhibit stent expansion and impede the delivery of large board devices, leading to alternative routes or conversion to a surgical approach, which adds complexity and can increase complication risks. Let me introduce the conventional practice to deal with calcified access for EVAR and TVAR. The open conduit is always an option, but it is associated with a higher rate of surgical complication and mortality. In the last 10 years, many end solutions for challenging access have been addressed, from a paving and cracking maneuver to the so-called endoconduits. The use of long covered stents is not only expensive, but it could be complex in such cases. It represents a solution in case of iliac ruptures, for example. But in any case, with the extension of the endoconduit from the common to the external iliac artery, a patent hypogastric artery is covered. And sometimes the bleeding is not well controlled if retrograde, and the risk of spinal cord ischemia could increase in particular in case of very extended aortic disease. The IVL represents a new dawn in technology that leads to new treatment options. Lithotripsy has been proved to treat calcific kidney stones effectively for over 30 years by cracking the kidney stones and allowing this to be passed. Shockwave IVL has miniaturized this technology, merging effective lithotripsy treatment with a simple PTA delivery system to treat arterial calcification. Here is a short animation explaining the IVL mechanism of action and how energy transfer to impact on the calcium, changing the compliance to allow for maximized luminal gain. When lithotripsy is delivered, a discharge of energy at the meter created a rapidly expanding and contractive vapor bubble, generating sonic pressure waves, which pass into the vessel wall, fracturing superficial and deep calcium, changing compliance and allowing for luminal expansion, and while causing no trauma to the soft tissue. To summarize the simple step of the procedure, you cross the lesion with the O14 wire, inflate to low pressure at four atmosphere, that's very important, achieving a position to the vessel wall. Deliver your energy with pass through the soft tissue, fracturing the intimal and medial calcium, allowing for luminal gain with significantly reduced complications. Below is a micro CT showing longitudinal and transfer fractures created following IVL that leads to the change in the compliance of the vessel. Here is an overview of the system. There are three simple components. The generator is lightweight, portable, and chargeable. The connected cable, which facilitates energy transfer from the generator and allows the physician to control lithotripsy to be delivered via the pulse bubble. The intuitive IVL catheter, which causes an array of lithotripsy emitter. Our focus to facilitate the large bore access is currently the 70 millimeter M5 that provide the most benefit to IVL in large iliac vessels. 
When choosing your sizing, it is recommended to size your catheter 1.1 to 1 to the reference pencil diameter. However, in the ILEC vessel, this is not always possible with the largest catheter being 7 millimeters. If the vessel is bigger than 7 millimeters, choose to use a post dilatation with the standard PTA following IVL to further luminal gain. There has been a recent observational registry conducted on IVL in the islands. And what can be seen from the about 120 patients is that IVL offers a safe and effective option in these large vessels. In 2019, Professor Carlo Di Mario published data on his experience of using IVL to facilitate TAVI access. This data highlights 100% technical success and show that IVL can assist the delivery on large pore access in heavily calcified vessels and in a safe and effective way. So, where should I use IVL? Which are the factors to consider when calcium is present? The length and the site of the lesions, the presence of eccentric calcium, the presence of concentric calcium that is commonly classified as the lesion at risk, and the minimum lumen diameter, in particular in case of these circumferential lesions. In general, the female sex, usually with smaller arteries, is considered more at risk of complications. The location of calcium is important. The orthoilic bifurcation are usually the two most important segments in many cases. And of course, the grade of calcified stenosis. The IVL is a useful tool in case of calcific 90% stenosis or in case of moderate concentric lesions that are the most important contraindication for our aortic endographs. So many times physicians sacrifice the correct endograph because of access limitations. IVL can help you to use the appropriate device by providing effective luminal gain. Today we have many aortic endographs available. We should find the right balance between a standard profile based on the patient anatomy and the low profile or ultra low profile endographs in case of extremely narrow and calcified lesions. And it's very important to accurately check all the iliac lesions during the planning and sizing. There are too many indications to IVL assisted EVA and TIVA. The first one, the most common, is to facilitate the endograph delivery to avoid complication as trauma, ruptures, and dissection, and to avoid stenting. In these cases, we need only to promote the passage of the large board devices, increasing the compliance of the vessels. The second indication is when an aortic disease is associated to an aort iliac occlusive disease. In these cases, we need to facilitate the endograph delivery and to improve the ILEC circulation at the same time. For this reason, in some of these cases, the lithotripsy could be considered a vessel preparation, such as in the peripheral district, combining additional procedures. Very briefly, I will show you a few cases from our clinical practice in Rome. As already mentioned, the IVL can help facilitate the delivery of endograph in very narrow calcific vessel. This is common in females. This is the CT scan of a female with severe comorbidities that came to our hospital during the night for a ruptured aortic abdominal aneurysm with very narrow and calcified iliac and femoral vessels. You can see very clearly how the minimum caliber was about 3, 3.5 millimeter bilaterally. We had to treat this patient in urgent setting, but she was at risk for open repair for the presence of severe comorbidities such as obesity, COPD, active kidney injury, and active pneumonia. 
And she was also unfit for Android there for this challenging access anatomy. We decided to perform a percutaneous EVAR with local anesthesia by using an ultra low profile endogram. A double and sequential ballooning allowed us to optimize the compliance and diameters of iliac vessels and delivering the graft in these small arteries. Here we can compare the preparative and the postoperative volume rendering and end navigation showing a better caliber and no signs of dissections. This is a case of a thoracic penetrating aortic ulcer. The IVL cracked the calcified stenosis on the right side with the perfect wall of position to facilitate the delivery of a 20 French thoracic graft and also in this case without no sign of dissection. The third case is another female. Abdominal aortic canaries with the aortoiliac occlusive disease with narrowed and calcified iliac axis. The minimum lumen diameter about three millimeter on both sides. You can see the severe calcified stenosis at the origin of the iliacs. A patent lumen less than two millimeter, we use the IVUS in this case, we crack the calcium by IVL to deliver the ultra low profile aortic endograft and prevent the stent recoil. In this case, a KC stent with a double BBX was used in place of the iliac limbs. The postoperative CT scan, together with the duplex scan, show us the aortic aneurysm exclusion and the flow improvement at the level of the common femoral arteries. In this case, an abdominal aortic aneurysm with end-stage renal disease, multiple concentric calcified lesions on both iliac axes that are very common in this kind of patients. Probably with conventional techniques, the patient would require bilateral long stenting. We decided to use a 70 millimeter IVL catheter to facilitate the delivery of the graft without use of additional iliac stenting. In the last case, an aortic arch aneurysm treated by using a 24 French thoracic device. In the first instance, the CD scan and the initial angiogram don't show a tight stenosis at the level of the left external iliac artery. We were not able crossing the lesion by using doctoring technique due to the lack of compliance of the vessel. We performed six cycles of seven millimeter IVL balloon and the increased luminal gain is well visible. And at this time, the higher compliance allowed us to deliver the graph. And finally, you can clearly see how the postoperative CT scan shows an improved luminal gain without signs of dissections. In conclusion, the IVL catheter is safe, intuitive, and effective. We have lower risk of ruptures and dissections with no need of endochondrites, and we can reduce the use of stents at the same time. We can optimize the luminal gain with low residual stenosis. Thanks to this new technology applied to calcified iliac arteries, we have a safe and minimally invasive approach for our aortic procedures reducing the rates of complications, the hospital stay, and recovery times for our patients. Thank you for your kind attentions.